Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be solving a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question. It's a rates question. Within rates we are looking at speed time distance and within that the subconcept is computing the length of the train. The train is crossing another object, right? The multiple scenarios in this, this is one scenario we will be looking at. Any speed distance time question to a large extent will basically revolve around knowing this relationship between distance, speed and time. Distance is the product of speed and time. Right? So this is the basis on which we are going to be solving this question also. There are obviously few more concepts involved but this is a core concept. Let's read the question and then look at a few things that we need to watch out for and then solve the question. A train travelling at 100 km per hour overtakes a motorbike travelling at 64 km per hour in 40 seconds. Right? So a train is overtaking a bike, the bike is slower, the train is faster, it takes 40 seconds to do that. What do we have to find out? The length of the train in meters. First and foremost, before we proceed any further into the concepts, look at the units. Speeds are given in kilometers per hour, 164 kilometers per hour. The time taken to cross is given in seconds, 40 seconds. What is asked? The length of the train. In what units? In meters. So just given all possible different units which are there. Thankfully, they did not give the speed of the bike a 64 mile per hour or something like that. Right? So they've taken some mercy on us. Right? Whenever in this topic, speed distance time, when you're writing a number, write the unit by the side of the number. So there's a mismatch in units, we can spot that and we'll not make a mistake. So make it as a good habit whenever you're solving questions in speed distance time. Right. On that note, let's get started. I would like you to refer to the first question in this playlist if you're watching it on YouTube or refer to the first question in this question bank where we talked about concepts of train crossing a stationary object. Right. So essentially, we're going to take the concept from there and proceed further. Huh. Before that, have you subscribed to our channel? If so, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. If you like this video, please like this video. At the end of this video, I provided you with a bonus question, which is a slight tweak of this question. Solve the bonus question and post your answers to the comment section. I'll respond to it if your answer is right or I'll give you an explanation if your answer is wrong. That note, let's get started. What do we have here? We have a train which is crossing a motorbike. Right? In the first question that I mentioned for link I've given in the description, we need to figure out whether the length of the train and the length of the bike, right? think of it as a bike. Right? Uh, is the length of the bike insignificant compared to the length of the train or is its length comparable to the length of the train? If the length of the bike, typically bikes would be one, one and a half meters long, trains would be hundreds of meters long. So that itself gives us a clue that the length of the bike is insignificant when compared to the length of the train. Had the length of the bike been meaningful compared to the length of the train, the question would have mentioned it. If it had been a platform, for instance, they'll say the length of the platform is 200 meters. Had it been a playground or a compound wall that the train is crossing, it would possibly say that the playground is like 600 meters long, the compound wall is 340 meters long, or it could be crossing another train, in which case they will give us the length of the train. They've not mentioned any of those things. The question is not asking us to find out the length of the platform or the bike in that case. Then essentially it means that the length of the object that we are considering is insignificant compared to the length of the train. In this case, bike is going to be probably a meter long. The train is going to be hundreds of meters long. So the object's length is insignificant compared to the length of the train. If that is the case, this is a concept that we learned in the earlier question, which is when a train crosses an object whose length is insignificant compared to the length of the train, the distance that the train travels in the process when it's completely crossing this object is equal to the length of the train. So distance traveled is equal to length of train. We have established that by saying that the length of the object, which is a bike right now, is insignificant compared to the length of the train. Typically, how do we find out distance? We know this is the formula. Distance is equal to the product of speed and time. Had this object been a man standing, had it been a lamppost, had it been a signal, had it been a parked bike, Right. The only object that would have been moving would have been the train. So it would have jolly well taken just the speed of the train and plugged it in here, converted the units and found out the answer. But this is a case where the train is traveling and they are mentioning that it is overtaking a bike. So the bike is also traveling and both of them are traveling the same direction. How would we spot that they are traveling the same direction? The train is not just crossing it, the train is overtaking it. So which means that there's a bike which is going here, train is moving faster, so it's overtaking this object. The two objects are traveling the same direction. This object is also traveling. It's not a stationary object, it's a mobile object. 
it is a moving object whose length is insignificant compared to the length of the train because its length is insignificant distance traveled is length of the train because it's a moving object we are not going to look at just the speed of the train we're going to look at the relative speed we're going to take the relative speed between the bike and the train relative speed between the train and the bike relative speed quickly concept if you're traveling in opposite directions which is not what is happening in this question opposite directions would be some of their speeds we'll call their speeds as sa and sb if they had been crossing each other in opposite directions then their relative speed would be some of their speeds in this question this is the question we are in they're traveling in the same direction if they're traveling in the same direction the relative speed would be the difference between their speeds in this case it's the speed of the train which is faster minus the speed of the bike which is slower so we need to use the relative speed instead of the speed in this distance is equal to product of speed into time we're going to use relative speed instead of just the speed that's how it's going to work quickly recap what you have learned here right these are the things you have learned when a train crosses another object that is also moving what we are going to factor in is not just the speed we're going to factor in the relative speed if objects are traveling in the same direction the relative speeds is the difference between their speeds yes a difference sb they're traveling in opposite directions the relative speed is the sum of their speeds right having got this we'll quickly run through it these two objects are traveling in the same direction so relative speed let's compute it is equal to speed of the train minus speed of the bike which is 100 minus 64 which is 36 kilometers per hour we know length of the train is equal to the distance covered when it is crossing this object distance is now computed as relative speed and multiplied with that the time it takes to cross the object relative speed we have computed it to be 36 kilometers per hour the time taken is equal to 40 seconds we'll convert kilometers per hour into meters per second if you recall it it's 5 upon 18 meters per second otherwise we'll derive it as we are going to do right now 36 times kilometer written as meters is 1000 meters R written as seconds is 3600 seconds. This is 5 times 200, 18 times 200. That's how that 5 upon 18 happen. So 36 kilometers per hour equivalent in meters per second is 36 times 5 upon 18. This into the time taken, which is 40 seconds. Speed in meters per second, time in seconds, the final answer you're going to get distance will be in meters. 18 cancels with 36 to leave us with a 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 40 is equal to 400. 400 meters is the length of the train quickly run through the answer options choice c is the correct answer to this question quickly look at what is a bonus question as it mentioned just made one small change in this bonus question train traveling at 100 bike traveling at 64 takes 40 seconds to cross it what is the length of the train everything remains same the change is it crosses the bike traveling in opposite direction in the question that we solved the bike and the train were traveling the same direction the train was overtaking the bike in this scenario they're traveling in opposite directions so you need to make adjustments to the relative speed i'm not changing the answer options either right answer options are intact check out which one makes sense and post your answers to the comment section of this video best wishes for a gmat